Good morning, good morning. I have a few extra minutes this morning, so we're gonna answer some dog training questions if people have them. This is a live Q&A, so you can type out your dog training questions and I'll do my best to answer them for as long as I have time. I know there's a lot of people struggling out there. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome. So live Q&A, if you've never done this with us before, you can go ahead and type out your dog training questions and I will do my best to answer them. Just getting settled. Anything that you have help with or anything that you need help with. Just purchased your puppy course and beginner course getting a chocolate lab on the 27th. Congratulations, super fun. Re watch that puppy course before you even get that puppy. Make sure you start everything off on the right foot as soon as that puppy comes into the house. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Started e collar training to eventually be off leash, but I'm scared to get to the point of taking off the leash in case he runs away. Um, if you are trying to get toward off leash with the e collar training, I would definitely, rather than taking the leash off, spend a lot of time with the dog just dragging the long line. So you actually let go of the long line and let them drag it. So 15 feet, sometimes 30 feet is a really nice, uh, comfortable length when you're giving your dog more freedom because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room to catch your dog if they decide to run away. Um, keeping that on and then slowly but surely shortening that leash. So going from 30 feet to 20 feet to 15 feet to a 10 foot leash to a six foot leash. Um, eventually when we get dogs down to just about being ready to be off leash, all they have on them is a simple little tab, like a six foot, six inch or a one foot long little tab leash on and that's all they have by the end just before we, we get them fully off leash. So kind of transitioning down rather than just going from having a leash on to having no leash on. Um, that gives you a lot of control during those learning learning times. I have a four month old puppy that doesn't want to learn down. I can lure him under my legs to lay down, but that is it. Um, we would recommend starting to teach um, maybe a little bit of leash pressure. Um, so where you're slightly pulling down on the leash at the same time. Um, so you're slightly pulling down dogs that have an opposition reflex, so they're naturally going to resist it. So don't, don't get, you know, worried about that, but slightly pull down and keep using the food lure. If your dog's butt pops up out of the sit position, lure them back or bring them back in with the leash, keep them in the sit position and slightly pull down and try to keep using your food lure and just wait there. Eventually dogs get a little, they get, start getting a little tired that, that you're pulling down on the leash and then they wind up laying down and then you can mark it with a treat or something like that and let the dog know that they did well um, if that's something that you want to see more in depth of with actual dogs and, and learn the the uh, sequencing behind that you can look at one of our online classes the basic foundation class um, goes over those leash pressure drills very uh, thoroughly my dog constantly humps um, you know I would say that that's probably a very, um, uh, a very common misconception with humping is that dogs are doing it for some type of sexual gratification, um, but they don't really operate that way. So humping very often is uh, excess anxiety, frustration. The dog is not stimulated enough throughout the day, and this is becoming the new habit to try to get rid of some of that excess energy. Um, I would say that's a very big component. Um, second component that goes into humping is that there's not enough leadership in the household. The dog is pulling, you know, what, what we would refer to as a dominance move or something like that is, is trying to assert, um, you know, themselves over other people. Humping can do that as well. Either way, um, I would exercise your dog more. I would train your dog more. I would walk your dog more. Um, and I would establish more leadership in the household and, and not let the dog do that. So keeping the dog on a leash and grabbing them and saying, nope, 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 and pulling them off kind of firmly and saying, we don't do that here. Let me, let me start fulfilling you in another way and showing you that I'm the leader in the household. Um, that should get rid of everything. Good morning. Advice on integrating a new dog to the household. Um, 
you know, if you have the time to do that slowly, that's best. But if you have to bring the dog home the same day or something like that, and you don't have an opportunity kind of like through a rescue or shelter to meet the dog on multiple occasions, if you have to bring the dog home the same day, um, my suggestion would be to make sure you have the dog separate from any other dogs when you first start integrating it in the house. So you're going to do a lot of crating and rotating where the dogs are not loose together just yet. If you have other dogs, I suggest taking them on long walks together long before you're letting them play in the backyard and loose in the house and stuff like that. Really let them get to know each other on neutral territory where it's nice and relaxed. All the dogs are in flight at the same time. Um, that's a good way of starting to integrate it. And if that's going really well, you can start introducing the dogs together more. Um, as far as just introducing in the household, everything needs to be taken really, really slowly. You have to show the dog exactly what you expect from them. Um, so lots of structure is what I would recommend. Um, I would hand feed the dog, hand train the dog with their own daily meals, teach them to look to you for that. I would keep a leash on the dog um, the entire time that it is outside of its crate. Uh, even if you're not holding on to the leash, I would keep the leash on. And if you're worried about the dog getting caught up on the loop of the leash, just cut that hand loop off where they just have a straight, simple leash hanging off of them. That way you can direct them wherever it is that you need to go and you avoid the pitfalls of talking too much or touching too much, which have a tendency to reinforce the behaviors that we're trying to get rid of. But very structured, very routine, really show the dog exactly what you expect from them and then you don't run into a lot of behavioral problems later on down the road. When should you start crate training for an eight week old puppy? Right away, right away. It's so much easier that the younger they are, the easier it is, even if they cry and stuff like that. They'll, they'll be just fine. So eight week old puppy overnight is the best way to start crate training. So scoop the puppy into the crate, um, put them in there overnight, let them cry it out for a few days. Um, I always give eight week old puppies um, one or two potty breaks during the night because their bladders are not strong enough to hold it overnight. And uh, by the time they hit about 12 weeks, I take those potty breaks away and they need to make it through the entire night. Um, but just let them cry it out for a couple of nights. And as long as you're diligent about not going over there and giving them attention or letting them out, they usually get over that within a couple of days. And then you have a dog that does just fine in the crate. <laughs> Having a hard time getting my 120 pound puppy to not jump on me. Others, uh, out of excitement she's a year-ish but was a stray until seven months so year-ish is um is an adult dog essentially so it's not not a puppy anymore so you just have a, an adult dog that's rude i really recommend keeping that leash on there um giving a really firm strong pop every single time the, the dog tries to jump on a guest and i would give the dog a really strong knee every single time that they try to jump on you and be firm about it um, and it can't be something where you're just trying to create that space and that leadership. Um, it can't be just for the jumping. You have to create that space and that leadership in everything that you do. So how they go through doorways, how they take food from you, how they walk with you. Those are all components that go into it to creating that respect of space and that respect of your leadership. If you're only focusing on the jumping, you probably won't have great results you'll have some but not great results until you're looking at the whole picture of leadership i think you're the same person um my seven month old great dane will not stop jumping on people when she's excited what can i do to stop this behavior same thing that i just recommended to the gal before creating more leadership leaving a leash on the dog firm correction um letting the dog know they can't do that and uh creating leadership outside of that as well. So if you say, I don't want you to do that, the dog goes, okay, I'm sorry. And they just go ahead and go back to what they were doing. But if they're not used to taking your leadership, I mean, you can say a whole lot of stuff in those moments and it won't matter. Advice in integrating puppy into a household that has cats. Um, do it slowly. Um, uh, I would honestly put your cats on a leash and put your puppy on a leash as well. And a lot, depending on the age of the puppy, if it's an eight week old puppy, I would allow your puppy to be curious about the cats as long as the cats are not going to retaliate against the puppy. If they are going to retaliate, I wouldn't let the puppy approach them. I would keep the cats at bay with a spray bottle, with a leash. 
um, all of that sort of stuff. If your puppy's a little bit older and rambunctious, you know, four or five months old, um, I would definitely put a leash on them, teach them some impulse control, teach them to hold a down command, just watch, teach them to hold a police command, just watch the cats kind of going by. When the dog is softer on a leash, they're allowed to approach the cats, maybe sniff a little bit, do a little bit of that each day, um, and then call it off and have the dog go back to their place bed. But just do it in small increments where the dog cannot get overzealous or is being coached about getting overzealous too quickly, and they can start learning the appropriate pattern with the cats. You are absolutely welcome. You are wondering if it was excess energy. Yeah, that, that's a big one. Um, you know, anytime we have a dog that just, people say barks all day long, or people say they hump all, everything, or they whine constantly, a lot of times it's just the dog is not stimulated enough, not enough exercise, not a, enough mental um, engagement and stuff like that. It's no, no different than with us. We turn into pests too. Um, when we're, we, we call it being stir crazy or having cabin fever or whatever, where we're just like, I just gotta go do something. I mean, we don't bark at people and we don't hump people. I mean, most of us probably don't, but, um, you know, we, we get that too, where we don't have enough stimulation. Your dog just needs more, more from the family and uh, that'll probably start getting better. Should a dog ever be corrected for reactivity if the dog is over threshold? It doesn't seem like fear, but overexcitement at arousal. Yes, um, but I would be fair about that and I would teach all of the skills that you expect from the dog in lower level distraction areas and pattern them over and over and over and over again. That way when you give your correction, if the dog happens to go over threshold, if you give the correction, um, the dog knows the alternate behavior that they should fall back into. And if they don't, uh, fall back into it on their own, you can at least coach them and you'll have the languages in place to be able to do that and the patterns in place of the actual behaviors that the dog already knows how to do it and can start implementing it. Um, so if it's just a brand new thing that you're introducing, I wouldn't recommend putting the dog over threshold and I would recommend going back to kindergarten, making it as easy as possible, patterning the behaviors you exactly want them to do and then moving forward slowly but surely as you, you test the dog. Uh, my dog will always aggressively bark at the TV when any animal is on yelling at him and ignoring him doesn't make it stop. Um, the reason it doesn't make it stop is that yelling is engaging with him. Um, so it's almost rewarding the behavior. I have to go. Hey! Um, so if you yell at the dog they're barking at the TV and you yell at them, um, what will happen is that the dog will think that you're giving them attention or praise or engagement for that type of behavior. They're not understanding necessarily because they don't understand your words or at least they haven't been patterned for those specific words just yet where you could just say a word to them like nope or no or something like that hasn't been patterned enough for them to understand that. So a lot of times it comes off as engagement. Um, so that's not gonna work. And ignoring him is definitely not gonna work because barking at the TV is releasing dopamine into the brain. So it means everything that he's doing is self-rewarding. It's like someone's over there feeding him steak and eggs every single day when he does it because it feels great. No different than with us, there are certain things that we do that make us feel good, that release dopamine into the brain, which is why we watch Netflix, which is why we play video games, which is why we play musical instruments, um, you know, and, and all of that sort of stuff because it relieve, releases dopamine. Nobody needs to reward us for doing it. It's just automatically rewarding. Same thing with your dog barking at the TV. Um, so my suggestion would be to correct the dog for that and teach the dog to hold a place command. Placement three, teach them to go to their bed and hold it. Um, so you can use a lot of different things to correct. You can use your leash and say, nope, and kind of pull them away from the TV, keep the leash on the dog. You can use a spray bottle filled with water, nope, and bring the dog over to their place bed and have them down. Um, but my suggestion is to teach the place command very thoroughly first before trying to implement it. That way the dog knows the alternate behavior um, and you'll have much better success with it rather than trying to teach the alternate behavior at the same time you're trying to stop the other one. Um, 
if you really want to know more about our the, the place command and really teaching it long term, getting your dog to hold it, um, and all that sort of stuff, especially with distractions, you can check out our online classes. The basic foundation class goes into that pretty pretty thoroughly. Five-year-old toy doodle has started biting and growling, showing teeth. Never had a problem. You know, it's really hard for me to tell you exactly what's going on with that because I don't know your dog. Um, a lot of different components can go into that. If you have a five-year-old dog that's never done anything like that and all of a sudden starts, um, it could be a pain issue, right? Arthritis, um, dis hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia. Um, could be some type of pain issue, discomfort, or what have you that might be causing that. So checking out with a vet might be a good start. Um, other things that can throw dogs off at that particular age, because that's not really a milestone in development. Um, other things that can throw dogs off are any type of stressful situations. So maybe you moved houses or you got a brand new neighbor or you have a roommate downstairs or a new dog moved in next door, or you had a really scary experience in the car, scary experience on the walk with your dog a week prior, two weeks prior. And that anxiety and stress has been still living in the body rather than being dealt with. Um, it can lead to a dog getting to the point where they're over overstimulated. Um, their brain, body, nervous system is overworked and it's getting to the point where it's just, it's just done. Um, it can also be a consistent lack of leadership in the house where the dog has been slowly but surely getting worse. And now we're seeing kind of the uh, more concerning response to that. Um, my suggestion would be give your dog more stimulation. My suggestion would be uh, start doing some more training where you are creating that, that leadership. I would leave the dog on a leash inside the house. So if they're growling over their food bowl or they're under the couch growling at you or whatever, you can grab the leash and you can move the dog wherever it is that you need to go. Um, start working the dog through that rather than letting them stay in that mindset. So being a benevolent leader can change so many things, but helping your dog work through it, especially if it is a stress response, and then possibly having your dog get checked out by a vet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My four month old pit bull is having trouble with recalls. Do you have a good method for recalls on and off leash? Well, yes I do. Um, I would never recommend doing it off leash for a very, very, very long time. Um, because if there's any, any chance whatsoever that your dog is not going to recall, you have zero control in that moment. And you're showing the dog that you have zero control in that moment. So I would not practice without control until I knew my dog was perfect until I knew my dog was going to respond. Um, so get a long line and work with your dog. Call your dog's name, pull on the long line. As soon as they start coming to you, yeah, explode. Give them a high value treat or something like that. Let them go back out and be distracted again. Call their name, pull on the long line. As soon as they turn, don't wait for them to get to you to praise them. As soon as they turn, praise them. Yeah, it's good job. When they get to you high value reward, let them go right back out and do what they were doing. Keep patterning that over and over and eventually your dog's going to love coming to you. Um, but you need that leash on. You need to be able to enforce it. You call their name and they sit there with their nose on the ground. I need to pull on that leash. Hey, I'm calling you right now. Um, don't go off leash at any point, um, anytime soon with that dog. How do you handle crate aggression possession for a dog that only shows it when closing and opening the crate but is fine outside the crate? That's a tricky thing, and I typically find that with dogs that have um, gone through some type of trauma or have been taken away from the litter very early, um, I, I see that in those types of dogs quite often. Um, and when I say taken away from the litter very early, it can be, you know, a dog that it's been taken away anything under eight weeks, right? I see that a lot in those types of dogs. Um, my suggestion is to teach the dog to hold it down in the crate. Um, when opening and closing the doors and things like that and see if that settles them down. I would have to know your dog a little bit more closely to know if it was actual resource guarding of the crate or if it was just um, a fear response to being closed into a closed, um, closed area. I'd have to know. Um, I'd have to know a little bit more about them and see more about what they're doing. But my suggestion would be to start teaching them to hold it down in the crate teaching them hold it down in the crate even if the door is open, working on opening and closing the door, um, marking that, giving food for every time the dog is calm and trying to counter condition um, the response to that. But beyond that, I don't know if I would give you any more advice until I knew your dog. I could put you in a really dangerous situation if I, if I say much more on that. 
How do you correct your dog for barking and scratching at door while you are outside and they are inside? Because the dog wants to come out with you and they're barking and scratching at the door. Um, what I would do is I would leave a little spray bottle um, right outside the door. If I heard them scratching and stuff like that, I would open the door and say nope and I'd go ch -ch 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 with the spray bottle. I'd close it and I'd go back out doing whatever it is that you were doing. Um, if it was really a problem, I would teach your dog place command, walk your dog on their indoor leash. You're going to hear that as a, as a, uh, something that I'm going to say to everybody indoor leash, and then walk your dog over to their place bed and have them wait there while you go outside. Um, but if they are at the door, you can do, um, a spray bottle. To work with e-collar in a distraction-full environment, do you recommend taking my dog to a dog park and work on leash with him in a corner of the park? He'll chase a stray cat if I drop leash. That's the last place I would practice. I, w I don't recommend dog parks to any of my clients. Um, there's just way too many things that go wrong in dog parks. You might have control over your dog, but you have no control over any of the other dogs. Um, and so you're always taking a gamble when you go in a dog park. Um, if you want to practice with distraction, practice outside the dog park and do that exact same thing and put your reps in outside the dog park. It's just the same amount of distraction, um, but it's just a lot more safe. My dog is very social and walks very well on a leash. I can't seem to break her from pulling towards another dog walking. How can I correct this? Um, your dog just doesn't understand time and place. So if you have a very social dog who thinks that every single second of every single day is social time, they've just never been shown time or place. So start showing your dog on the walk that other dogs are not, not part of the equation. So go places like the dog park or the walking trails where they're gonna see a lot of dogs. Put your dog in a sit position or a down position on the side of the path or just outside the dog park and spend two hours watching the dogs go by. Okay, start teaching your dog, this is not the time and place. When we're on leash, it's not the time and place. We're gonna let all these dogs go by and you're learn gonna learn just to decompress and let them go by, this is not the time and place. But if we go to you know, a family barbecue and there's dogs there or whatever, um, and you want to let her loose and let her go play, great, this is the time to go do that. But when we're on leash and when we're walking, it's not the time to greet other dogs. And don't let her greet other dogs. So if you see other dogs and she drags you all the way over to them, don't let her greet them. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Teach her that on the walk is not the time to greet other dogs and we won't be doing that anymore. You can go cut loose and have fun um, at the barbecue. So it's no different than with our kids. We teach them there's a time and place for wild and hyper behavior you know great aunt lucy's funeral is not it the schoolroom is not it church is not it right but if you want to cut loose at the theme park or you want to cut loose at the arcade great go for it you want to do it at the birthday party go for it go be go be bananas we start teaching our kids that and as adults we start to understand that as well that there's a time and place for certain behaviors coprophagia ew Um, if you've been dealing with it since 10 weeks old and she's 10 months old, um, I might look at really changing up her diet. It sounds like she might be missing something if she's been doing it at that young of age. Um, I would really start maybe changing up her diet and uh, trying to help her gut out so she doesn't feel the need to do that. Um, and then also if it has become a habit that even if her gut is healthy, she still, still tries to do that. Um, I would put her on a leash when you potty her and, and give her a correction, pop, pop, pop every single time that she wants to try to engage with poop and walk her around and potty her that way, um, until you've created a new habit, but that can take a while. So you've had 10 months of a previous habit, so it's not going to happen overnight. Um... How do I stop our dog from barking at other dogs when they're in the same space, like standing at the sidewalk and talking to my neighbor? She runs away from the other dog as well as if the dog approaches. Um, you know, I think you really need to start working on some advocacy. Advocacy is where you stick up for your dog and protect your dog. Part of that leadership component is, is not only, you know, disciplining your dog and teaching them exactly what to do and what not to do, but a big component for that is is showing them that you'll stick up for them. 
Um, so check out our YouTube channel. Uh, I think the video is called uh, How to Build Trust with a Fearful or Anxious or Aggressive Dog or something like that. Talks a lot about advocacy. That's going to help um, keeping your dog on leash, teaching them to hold a strong sit or a strong down while you advocate is going to help slow the brain, body, and nervous system down so that they can start relearning about those particular stressors. Eleven month old Doberman has always been fearful in public since eight weeks old. He's not interested in food when I'm when I'm when in this state. What can I do to help him be more confident in public? Um, I honestly don't even really use food when I bring bring dogs out in public. Um, what you can do is start teaching your dog to walk nicely on a leash. Um, really, really teaching that that structured walk where it is just a bond between handler and dog. Um, that leadership is going to be so important. Working on your advocacy, go check out that video I just talked about on our YouTube channel, um, How to Build Trust with a Fearful, Anxious, Aggressive Dog, and um, start implementing those two things. Those two things should help tremendously. Above and beyond that, I would teach the dog to hold a down position in public where you're slightly away from all of the stressors and just have your dog down and watch. Watch for two hours. Watch everything that's going on because their natural instinct is to go into fight or flight. So fight is barking, lunging, and all that other sort of stuff. Flight is cowering and trying to get away from everything. Have them lie down and relearn about everything. When they start to realize that not every kid and not every dog and not every person, not every cart and not every you know basket in somebody's hands is out to get them, they start slowing down and stop overreacting to the environment. So try putting all of those into play. So walking nicely, advocacy, and um, sitting and watching for long periods of time it should really help with that. Mental stimulation ideas for inside the home. Um, so what we do here in our training facility is every single dog earns their daily meal. We don't work with any type of treats or anything like that. All the dogs work for their daily meals. So they do um, obedience routines for sit down and place command. They do uh, recall work. They do um, counter conditioning for touching feet, counter conditioning for touching ears, counter conditioning for teeth brushing, counter conditioning for br uh, 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 brushing and all of that sort of stuff. They do confidence building on higher surfaces and what have you. That's a great way to stimulate your dog's mind is by having them work for their food in one way or another. I have a three year old pit bull. Doesn't like his teeth brush and I need to do it due to his breath and the color of his teeth. What are some tips? Counter conditioning. Um, so I would start with just starting to handle your dog's face. So if your dog will allow you to touch here, then that's where I would start. I would touch and I would say yes and give some type of food, some type of treat or something like that. I would touch and yes, touch and yes, touch, yes, touch, yes, touch, yes, touch, yes, touch, yes, touch, yes. And I may do that for four or five days, um, multiple times per day. Then what I might start doing is touching the actual parts that I'm going to open up. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. Touch, yes. When you continually pair the, the, the yes marker with the food, you're starting to train the brain to release dopamine every single time that it hears that word. And it starts to make the dog feel good about something that it doesn't particularly like. Do that over and over again. Start touching teeth with your fingers. Yes, touching teeth with your fingers, touching teeth with your fingers um, over and over and over again. Then I would start just do the whole process over with the toothbrush. So touch the toothbrush here. Yes, touch the toothbrush here. Yes, touch the toothbrush here. Yes, 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 yes. And then start touching the toothbrush. Yes, touching the toothbrush. Yes, yes. It's going to be a long process, especially if your dog's aggressive about it. Um, but if you keep going at that pace, it should turn out just fine. How long can my dog wear his muzzle that is fair? I guess it depends on the kind of muzzle that you're wearing. Um, if it's a muzzle that actually straps the mouth sh shut, 10 minutes at most. If it's a basket muzzle that's wide open that the dog can eat and drink and pant through, um, you know, that's, that's just up to you. But if you're 
you know, you have family members over from out of town and you're concerned about what your dog might do and they're gonna be in the house for six hours, I don't see a problem with your dog wearing it for six hours. If you notice any type of irritation, you can wrap the muzzle with moleskin, you can wrap the muzzle with like ace bandage wrap type stuff so that it's softer on the face and then the dog can wear it for longer periods of time. Um, you know, as, as long as the, the dog is comfortable in it and the people are being safe, I don't really see a time limit necessarily. I'm, I mean, obviously not days, but I don't really see a time limit as far as one day is concerned to have it on. The classes are fantastic. Thank you, Stacy. You are welcome. Will a fearful, aggressive dog ever enjoy being around other dogs or people, or is it like an introvert that tolerates a party? You'll have to get to know your dog. Um, I know lots of fearful, fear aggressive dogs that are fear aggressive because they don't understand any social cues whatsoever. They don't understand other dogs at all. They don't understand people at all. And when they really start getting a handle on it and understanding it, you see kind of a cute playful side of them come out. Then you have other dogs that um, they're, they're just not into it because they're not into it. And you might get them past their aggression stages, but after that, they're still, they're still into just coexisting, which is totally fine. Um, you know, for instance, this isn't quite the same thing, but um, three of I have three dogs. I have two German Shepherds and a Malinois. And uh, my two German Shepherds are social in the sense that they don't have any problems with people or dogs, but they don't like being pet. As soon as you reach to pet them, they're like, eh, eh, and they kind of just move away. Whereas my Malinois, you reach to pet him and he's going to smash into you and absorb every single pet that you want to give him. Um, but it's just, ne neither one of them is wrong. It's just their type of personality. None of them are aggressive or anything. Um, so you do have to look at that, at what the personality is after you've rehabbed the fear. Um, after you've rehabbed the fear, you should know where the dog is at. And I'd say it's different for every dog. My three-year-old Labradoodle resource guards his food bowl while he's eating. What is a good way to stop this? You know, um... I would say a lot of trainers recommend correcting the dog in those moments, and I'm definitely not one of them. I feel like that solidifies exactly what the dog thinks is going to happen. Uh, I really like using direction during those moments more so than correction. Um, and so something that we have found over the years that works really, really nicely to teach the dog to be comfortable uh, letting go of possession of their food bowl is doing recall. Um, so practice recall a lot outside of the food bowl, practice it outside, teaching the dog to come when called, teaching him to enjoy it, working on that long line, getting rewarded for it. And then I start teaching the dog to recall off of their food bowl. So they're recalling off of the food bowl, they're relinquishing possession, they're coming to the handler and they're getting a higher value reward for coming to the handler. And then I go let them go back and eat. And I do that over and over and over again. That way I'm not creating any type of conflict. Um, I'm not in there with my hands in it. I'm not grabbing the dog. I'm not high level correcting the dog. I'm actually doing the opposite of conflict. I'm using direction to create a better relationship with me where the dog is willing to move off their food bowl um, for something that's more engaging and fun with me. I do find that works pretty well. Will a fearful dog in public ever become comfortable? I've been taking her in public one to two times a week and she pants, shakes and pants. It should definitely get better. Um, you know, if you, if you haven't done our online courses, I would recommend that just to make sure you're doing it correctly. Um, and if you have maybe possibly looking into some more intensive training. Um, but it, it, if you're doing it incorrectly, it won't matter how many times you take her out in public, it'll, it, it won't get any better. And sometimes it'll even get worse. So it's just a matter of, um, making sure that the, uh, the strategy is correct. Potty training tips. My dog goes out a lot and still pooping in crates sometimes, not all the time. Um, if they're pooping in the crate all the time, you might want to change their food, uh, change their food up where they can hold it a little bit better. Sometimes dog food has a lot of peas or other things that are added to it and it makes it puff up kind of big and difficult to hold for the dog. Um, so possibly looking into that. 
um, making sure that your dog is eliminating outside prior to bringing them back into the crate. And then um, sometimes you have just a dirty dog, so that's what it's called in the industry, where your dog does not care about pooping in the place that it sleeps. Uh, what I typically do if I have dogs that are pooping in the crate, I make their crate smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller um, so that they don't have an opportunity to escape away from the poop. So if the crate is this big and your dog is this big inside the crate, they can poop over here and just sit and sleep over here, no problem, and not have any issue with it. So I'll kind of keep making that smaller to see if I can test the dog on whether or not they're willing to poop where they sleep. Um, and I would say 50% of dogs will, will start holding it at that point because they don't want it directly underneath them. Um, they'll start holding it better. But I would look into possibly changing the food because sometimes, sometimes those foods can have a lot of fibrous stuff in it and it's just hard for the dogs to hold it. Um... Uh, hi, I have a seven month old golden doodle. She bites your ankles, calves and hands and forearms, not to break skin, but grabs at you with her mouth and teeth. How do you stop that? That's lack of leadership. Keep your dog in the, in the, on a leash inside the house. Have the leash draping off of them every single time they do it. Nope. Pop, pop, pop. Move your dog away. Use a spray bottle. Move your dog away. Start showing your dog to respect your space. And I would teach them, even when you're not mouthing me, you don't enter my space unless I've given you permission. So use a knee. Use your body language. Hey, get out of my space a little bit. I'm going to sit down on the couch. You don't need to crowd me. Start teaching that on a regular basis and then only invite the dog in when they're in, in a perfect mindset. Start teaching him to respect that space. We do it with each other. We need to start doing it with our dogs. My dog gets frustrated and flips over his bowls when I leave him or let my other dog out, even though I've already taken him out first. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, a dog that has no impulse control. It's throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum there. Teach your dog to hold place command while you take the other dog out. And every time they try to get up and throw a fit, nope, back on the place command, down, good. And you're going to bring your other dog out. They have to learn to control themselves. It's not all about them all the time. Very similar to children. You are the best. Content is the bomb. Why, thank you. Hi from Canada, hello. Do you usually prefer a nail grinder or clippers and why? Um, I really love teaching my clients to use the Dremel. Takes a lot of fear away for quicking the dog, um, especially if you have a fidgety dog, quicking the dog can be a lot more precarious with clippers than, than if you were using a nail Dremel. I also have found that when you are counter conditioning for nail trimming to get the dog comfortable with it, I can do multiple sessions in a week, sometimes every single day and hardly take anything off of the nail. Whereas with a clipper, um, I'm taking off more and sometimes it can be hard to do the necessary steps to get the counter conditioning to take place. Um, and if you are not, if you're hardly taking off anything with your clippers, you're not really preparing the dog for the big snapping sound, which tends to be one of the biggest, biggest foot jerking motions. Um, and if you can't do that over and over and over again, a lot of times it doesn't get as conditioned as well. So that's one of the reasons we like the, the Dremels. While doing and sitting and watching, she shakes and pants a lot. That's fine. That's her working through it. Just have her, have her hang out there and hold that down position. The down position is much better than the sit position. Thank you. You're welcome. My dog can walk by dogs without reacting but still fixates or has a quick look back when we pass. Sometimes hackles up. Um, anytime you see fixation, I want you to control the head. So if the dog is in front of you and your dog 
perks up like this and they're looking at it, I want you to take a step backwards and tap, 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 and walk your dog backwards, get them settled at your side and try it again. Every single time, nope, tap, 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 turn their head off. If they're looking this way, tap, 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 this is where I want your head. They're looking over here, tap, this is where I want your head. Control the head, teach the dog, don't worry about anything, put those blinders on, just follow me, just work with me, just trust me, okay? Um, that should start to help. Loving this live, learning so much, I'm glad. If a person brings a dog to the shadow program, where should they be in training? Can they have significant issues or should they be relatively well behaved? It's wherever, wherever people want them to be. I mean, most of the people coming to the shadow program are from out of state or from out of the country. It's going to be hard to travel with a dog that's completely out of control. So you might want to consider stuff like that. Uh, but it doesn't matter to me either way. It can be totally out of control. Always a prong when training, um, only if there's a risk of choking. Um, if you have a dog that, that doesn't pull hard, that isn't pulling hard on their neck, uh, I use slip leads all the time. I think they're great. Would you counter condition for a dog who ducks his head away anytime someone goes to pet the top of the, their head or advocate for people not to pet the top of his head? I don't know. I would try both. I would see which one, which one benefits the dog. I would honestly toy with the counter conditioning for quite a while to see if that would benefit. And if it doesn't, then, then I would go back to the other way. Feta and Tucker say hi. Oh, I miss them so much. Feta and Tucker are a couple, couple boarding trains that went home a little bit ago. Sweet, sweet dogs. I've done your online courses. Thank you for answering. You're welcome. How many board and train dogs do you train at any given time? Um, it's usually an average of about 25. I am just finished your online leash reactivity class and I'm so happy with the amount of progress that has been already been made. You are the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tips on tips to build dog's threshold when training to be left alone. Is it separation anxiety? Um, honestly, if it's any type of issue with being separated, your dog needs more separation. So um, have someone else walk your dog, have someone else feed your dog, have uh, send your dog to the groomers, you know, send your dog to boarding and all these other types of things and start, start severing that, that relationship a little bit. And then when you're going to start letting the dog be home alone, I would just go. I wouldn't, I wouldn't baby them a whole lot. I would just go unless they're going to injure themselves or something like that. Then you might have to do a lot more intricate stuff. Um, my large dog will sometimes throw a temper tantrum and go boneless so that we can't move her. Any tips? That's funny. Leave a leash on, on the dog. Pull, 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 pull. Keep pulling that dog, keep pulling that dog. And as soon as they take one step, stop pulling. As soon as they make one motion to move, stop pulling. And then if they go, okay, and they stop moving in, pull, 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 keep pulling. You're almost dragging them, pull, pull, pull. As soon as they make one step, stop pulling. Loosen your leash right away, okay? Then they're knowing, okay, the pulling is gonna continue until I move on my own and the dog will start moving. Hi from Hawaii. Hello. Gunner is much better with guests in the home. Thank you for helping us through his anxiety. You're welcome, Lori. I miss that goofball. Resource guarding with other dog tips. Um, only will play with other dogs tug, but I have to watch 100% of the time and use leave it, come, etc. constantly to avoid potential issue. Honestly, are you the same person? Another person has the same question. Honestly, there's a, there's a lot that goes into stopping resource guarding between other dogs. Um, my suggestion for that would be is don't have any of those resources out when there are other dogs around. And if it's multiple dogs in your own household, um, play with them individually.
you hang around dogs long enough, you start to get to know their sounds. And I know for a fact that is, that is one particular dog who is pestering the dog next to her and really starting to get that dog worked up. So I had to go take, take care of that. All right. If my dog research guards his ball when other dogs are around, what should I do? I would just not not have any of those resources out. That's the, the best way to solve that problem. If there's other dogs around, don't have the dog have a ball. And if you're in a dog park, you should not be in a dog park. And I don't recommend dog parks to anybody. Super dangerous places. Uh, where do you recommend getting a slip lead from? I have one from Amazon, but it gets caught on the slip part. Sorry, I don't know the name. Um, you know, Mendota makes phenomenal slip leads. I would recommend them. Mendota pet products. You're welcome. You're welcome. What if it's resource guarding a food with dogs in the same household? Um, yeah, that's a harder one. Um, I would start teaching some impulse control. So start with feeding all the dogs in their crates um, and then having no food left out. And then if you were gonna start training, working each dog for their meals during the day while other dogs hold place, start having dogs all holding place with their food bowls in front of them to practice impulse control, um, start teaching them to eat alongside one another, but you have to develop a lot of leadership with this, uh, but teaching them to hold place, have their food bowls out in front of them, teach them that impulse control, start releasing them to eat alongside one another, make sure that every dog has someone holding on to their leash where they can learn to kind of start eating like a pack and get past that. Um, but you better have a whole lot of leadership in place. Otherwise, they're going to do things in their own way. But that's, that's how we would do it here. Would you stop a dog from aggressively shaking their toys over and over again until the toy is taken away? Most dogs do it playfully, but this dog seems obsessive about it. Yeah, I definitely would. Oops. Pressing wrong buttons. Big dog that barks at everybody and everything when outside because she wants everyone and everything's attention. She also does this when watching out of windows and doors. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to correct her for that. I would use a spray bottle. I would leave the dog on a leash every single time that they try to do that. Nope, <laughs> grab the leash, bring them over to their place bed, down, good. How do you counter condition a dog that is highly reactive to squirrels? Uh, you wouldn't counter condition that. You would just teach the dog to walk appropriately on leash that hold that structured heel command. Um, and then start teaching the dog to do that in the presence of squirrels. So um, if you need more detail on that, our, our leash reactivity course goes over that very in depth. There's actually a dog there in that, in that course, I think that was big about birds and squirrels. Okay, I am going to close this up because I have to get off to my next appointment, but I appreciate you all joining me, and I will try to do more of these when I can. And um, if you folks do need additional help, we have online classes for most things. Um, the Puppy Foundation course is for dogs that are like between eight weeks and four months old. really goes over how to set up your puppy for success and try to avoid behavioral issues. Um, the basic foundation is good for any dog that's five months or older. So they could be 15 years old if they want to be, but it really sets a foundation for you, uh, for obedience work, for advocacy work, for leash walking, for all that sort of stuff. The, uh, intermediate, um, course goes a lot more in depth to obedience, to socialization, to, um, uh, walking out in public, public access, all of that sort of stuff. And then we have our leash reactivity course, um, which goes over, you know, any type of reactivity it's kind of a um it kind of singles out just those pieces from the the uh intermediate course so that you don't have to purchase the whole intermediate course if you're just dealing with some reactivity but we do recommend everyone take the basic and intermediate courses together it's more powerful than all the other courses so anyway check those out if you need more help um otherwise we'll just see you folks around thanks for joining me